Hello everyone. So till now we have discussed uh, about the SQ, how the SQ is behaving in terms of the setup and hold violation. So like uh, if we will decrease the SQ, there are chances of setup violation. If we increase the SQ, there are chances of hold violation. Similarly, we have also discussed that if SQ is less than our data part delay, data part delay in the sense uh, clock to Q and uh, Q to D6 uh, delay. So if uh, SQ is uh, greater than this data part delay, the circuit is functionally wrong. So now in this lecture, we will talk about like, uh, let us suppose that in your circuit, there is a setup and hold violation and you want to fix that setup and hold violation with the help of the SQ. Then what are the different ways to do that? What are the recommendation uh, we have for doing that? If, uh, whether there is any complexity with the such method and uh, if uh, there is a complexity that how it is going to impact the, our final design. We will also discuss like uh, uh, in a general design technique why we are not referring, we are not recommending that you should you, uh, you should touch the clock part during the, uh, during the fixing of the hole and the setup violation. So uh, let's start uh, with that uh, and uh, we will start with uh, the flip-flop 5 and flip-flop 6. So let us suppose that there is a hole violation within this path. So this is a timing path uh, Q5 to Q6 and, and uh, as I mentioned that you want to fix that hole violation with the help of the SQ only. So uh, SQ only in the sense that you want to touch the clock network. So the point is like uh, if you want to do that, that how can we fix this violation? So as we have discussed in the previous lecture that uh, there is a relationship between the hole and the skew. So if you will increase the skew, then there are chances that your circuit violate with the hole violation. And uh, so if you want to fix the hole violation, so you have the very simple technique that you just decrease the skew with this path. So this is the clock 6 and this is the clock 5. So I would say like uh, you just decrease the skew with, within this path. So how can you decrease the skew? So basically here uh, in this path you can see that there are three ways. Either you remove this buffer, that is the one option. The second option is you can also remove this, this particular buffer. And the third option is like you, you can just keep this path as it is and you can just add one buffer here. If you will remove this buffer, now you can see that delay. So let us suppose if uh, there is no delay here and initially there was a delay of one buffer away, one nanosecond delay, then you can see that uh, there are two nanosecond delay was there. Now if you will remove this, there is a, a delay of one nanosecond. That means uh, you decrease the SQ. So if you will decrease the SQ, obviously the whole violation is fixed. The second method is in place of removing this, you can add one buffer here also. So relatively you can see that in place of removing this buffer and decrease the delay from 2 nanosecond to 1 nanosecond. So what exactly you are doing? So there are two ways that if you will remove this, uh, this buffer. So the, this technique that you remove this buffer the definitely from 2 nanosecond the difference become 1 nanosecond. The second technique is you just keep this buffer as it is and you just add one buffer here. It is also the, let us suppose the one nanosecond. So difference of this is again as a, uh, from the two nanosecond, you uh, decrease it in the one nanosecond. This is the two, uh, the two second option. The third one is you don't touch, you don't add here anything. You don't remove this one. You can remove this particular buffer also. So same thing that either you can remove this buffer or you can remove this buffer or you can add one buffer here. So you have these options uh, when you are fixing the uh, hold violation. Similarly, if you have to fix the setup violation, so in place of decreasing the SQ, uh, you can increase the SQ and in the, if you want to increase the SQ, definitely either you just, if there is any buffer here, so you can remove that buffer, you can add one more buffer in this path, you can add one more buffer in this path. So in this way, you can, uh, you can fix your setup violation. You come to know that okay how uh, we can uh, fix the whole of the setup violation. So the next question will come that uh, what is the implication of uh, the, uh, this particular method. Let's take uh, one by one. So the first one is you remove uh, this particular buffer. 
so just remember like right now there is a buffer and i'm saying that there is no setup and hold violation in the whole circuit so that means in this circuit also there is a no setup and hold violation in this path the sq is let us suppose uh, this is the 1 nanosecond and the 2 nanosecond that means the sq is 1 nanosecond and there is no setup and hold violation so if you will remove this particular buffer so what is going to happen now this 1 nanosecond skew that is going to increase 2 nanosecond and as we already discussed that if you increase the skew what will happen there are possibility that there will be the hold violation so what you have done that just removing this buffer it can fix the hold violation in this between the FF5 and FF6 but there are chances that it will violate this particular path so you fix the hole violation here but this path now violating the hole check so that is the one drawback of removing the buffer here so now what what you will do you will say that okay you will not remove this particular buffer and you will add one buffer here so it is going to solve the same purpose that means in this path you are decreasing from 2 nanosecond to 1 nanosecond and there is a no change here so there is no change here it is still the 1 nanosecond but what will happen to the this path initially there is no buffer here that means the difference between this path is 1 nanosecond so if I am talking about this the sq within this path is 1 nanosecond the moment you added this that means you increase the skew here and if you increase the skew here what will happen there are chances that this particular path violate the whole violation that means this this option is also not recommended Th this is one of the uh, reason that we never recommend to add or remove the clock buffer which is very next to the clock six so never uh, we we always ignore this approach we don't want to add a buffer here or we, we if let us suppose the buffer is here then we don't want to remove this buffer here because it may fix your whole violation or the setup violation that particular path but it can affect the another path so now the thing is that in place of removing this buffer so if if you are removing this buffer that is not going to solve our problem so we can say that don't remove this one and don't add any buffer here so you can touch this this buffer which is like a buffer bar so what is going to happen now if you will remove this particular buffer then the sq will decrease in this particular path so from 2 to 1 now since for this particular path this it is more important that what is the skew here this buffer is common for clock 6 and the clock 7 it is not going to affect this timing path this buffer is outside the timing path of between the clock ff4 and ff5 this is outside the this so it is not going to affect this timing path also so you can say that this is the right approach okay now we got it let me just summarize the thing that if you want to fix the hold or the setup violation so what we have to do in a, if you want to fix the hold violation you want to decrease the skew so for decreasing the skew in this particular scenario you had three options like remove this particular buffer or you can add one buffer here or you can remove this particular buffer in the setup it will be the reverse so as we just discussed that if you will add any buffer here it will affect the timing path between the ff4 and ff5 because the sq will increase so that means your there are chances that there will be the whole violation similarly if you will remove this particular buffer again you are increasing the sq in this path and there are chances that this path will have a whole violation so the right approach is that you will always either add or remove the buffer from this common clock path so for this common clock path in the sense this path is common for the next stage and this path is not going to come into the previous previous stage so there is a no problem in the next uh, uh, 
uh, lecture we will discuss that what are the different complications if we will add this particular buffer in this place like an example like, uh, let us suppose that uh, if your circuit have something similar to this so what will happen similarly there are other other uh, complications in the circuits also we will discuss that part in the next lecture